Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Let's talk a little bit about weight and gravity. And these are obviously concepts that you're all familiar with, but let's see how they tie together. You're standing here on the Earth, and you feel a force on you, F sub G, which is due to gravity. Okay, that's the gravitational force of the Earth pulling down on you. Now let's say somebody else standing on the other side of the Earth also experiences a force F sub G, but of course that F sub G is pointing upwards. Okay? This is the way gravity works. It always points towards the center of the Earth. So if you're on the moon, it's going to point towards the center of the moon. If you're on Mercury, it's going to point towards the center of Mercury. The force is always acting towards the central point. Now, when we think about you standing here on the Earth, how do we draw a free body diagram for that? Well, we make you a dot, and then we identify the forces that are acting on you. You've got F sub G due to gravity, and then you have the normal force, N, which is the Earth pushing back up on you, okay? And what we know is, if you are stationary, then we can say the sum of the forces equals the mass times acceleration. The acceleration is going to be zero if you're stationary. Now, whenever you write down this equation, you look at it, you say, oh, I have a vector there, I have a vector there. I can break it up into components. So sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to mass times the acceleration in the y direction. And now we just identify what those forces are. So in the x direction, do we have any forces? No, we don't have anything pointing in the x direction. Right? Typically we say x is to the right, y is up. So there's no forces in the x direction, which is good because that's equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction which is also zero, zero equals zero, we're happy. But what about the y direction? In the y direction, we have the normal force from the Earth pushing up on us, N, and we have Fg down. But we know exactly what Fg is. It's equal to your mass times gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. So we put a minus mg right there. That's equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. And we said that that has to be equal to zero. And so you just get n equals mg. Okay. How hard is the Earth pushing up on you? It's pushing up with your mass times gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. But let's change the picture just slightly. Here's our Earth. Here is a scale, and you are going to stand on the scale. Okay? We can draw the exact same picture here. The only difference is this normal force N is the force of the scale pushing up on you. Okay, this is our scale right there. Okay, and you've all done this. You've all stood on a scale. What happens in a scale is there's a little spring that compresses. As it compresses, it rotates a needle that shows you different numbers. Those numbers correspond to your weight. They correspond to your mg. And so this is really what we call weight, what I like to call weight. How hard is a scale pushing up on you? How hard is the normal force underneath you pushing up on your body? Okay. A lot of times in the homework, when they refer to weight, what they refer to is mg. So if you ever see that in the homework, the weight of this thing, that's what they mean. They mean mg. But I like to think of weight in terms of this sort of psychological principle. 
how hard is the scale underneath you pushing up on you? And if I weigh 170 pounds, what that means is when I stand on a scale, it's pushing up on me with 170 pounds of force. You guys like in pink? Is pink looking okay? Yeah? But let's take a look at the forces that act on you when you're in an elevator. And let's set up the, uh, the drawing here. Here's our elevator. And just to be tricky, let's put a scale inside the elevator. Okay, and you are standing on the scale inside the elevator. Here are the cables going up. This is the elevator. That's you. What are the forces that are acting on you? Somebody have a thought? Let me know. What is a force that is acting on you? Yeah, Ian. Gravity. Gravity. Gravity is, of course, down. F sub G. OK. If this dot represents us, then gravity is going down. Any, uh, any other forces that are acting on us? Thomas, what do you think? Is there another force that's acting on us? The scale is pushing up on you. OK, the scale pushing up on us. OK, and we can call that the normal force due to the scale. OK, so if that's the normal force due to the scale, it's pushing up on us, gravity is pushing down on us. What can we say about that normal force from the scale? If I weigh 170 pounds, is the normal force from the scale equal to 170 pounds? Anybody have a thought on that one? Yeah, Ryan in the back, what do you think? Doesn't it depend on the acceleration of the uh, elevator if it's going up or down? Okay, have you experienced this before? Yeah. Okay, you've been in, ever yeah. been in an elevator, right? So in an elevator, do you feel heavier or do you feel lighter when it starts moving up? You feel heavier. You feel heavier, right? When it starts moving up, you feel heavier. When it gets to the top and it slows down, you in fact feel a little bit lighter. Okay, and so you identified the important parameter here is, is the elevator accelerating? So let's take a look at that. All right, we, we know we don't have any forces in the x direction. We don't really have to worry about that. But we do have forces in the y direction. And the forces that we have are n of the scale minus gravity, which we know is mg. And all of that is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the elevator. Okay, we don't know exactly what that A is yet, but we drew it going up. So it's the same direction as the normal force from the scale. And now we can write the normal force from the scale. It's just equal to mg plus ma. And in fact, we can combine the g and the a because they both have a common factor of m, and this is what we get for the normal force from the scale. This is your weight. This is your perceived weight. When we said you feel heavier when the elevator is starting to accelerate upwards, it's because A is a positive number then, and I'm adding it to a positive number. Remember, G is always positive 9.8 meters per second squared. We took into account the negative part of it right here when we said that force is downwards. Okay? But G itself is always positive 9.8. All right, so if we are accelerating upwards rather quickly, like G, which would be way too quick for an elevator. Okay, elevator would never do that. But let's say it did, right? If it accelerates upwards with a magnitude of g. What do we get? We get n for the scale is g plus a, which is now another g, and we get 2mg. OK, 
Okay, so if this, if this elevator accelerated up with G, you would suddenly feel twice as heavy. If you were 170 pounds initially, you would now be 340 pounds. Okay? You know elevators don't do that, right? I mean, when elevators accelerate upward, it's a small fraction of G. You feel a little bit heavier, but really not that much heavier. Okay? Let's look at the other extreme. Let's say that we cut the cable. Okay? If we cut the cable, break it in half, and now all of a sudden this thing is falling, then we are in free fall. What is our acceleration? Yeah, Austin, what do you think? What is our acceleration if we are in free fall? Negative G. Negative G. The elevator is falling at negative G. The scale is falling at negative G. I am falling at negative G. Everything is falling at negative G. So what do we get for the force of the scale pushing up on us? Well, it is right here. M times G plus A. And we just said A was negative G. So we get M times G minus G, which is, of course, zero. What do I call that, Austin? If the N from the scale is zero, what is that phenomenon? What do I call that? Weightless. Weightless. Exactly right. This is weightless. When there's nothing pushing back up on you, you feel weightless. And this is what happens in roller coasters. Remember I talked about going to Knott's Berry Farm and riding the Excelsior? which if you have any kind of heart condition, you should never do. <laughs> it's ridiculously fast and ridiculously high um, roller coaster. But one of the goals of that roller coaster is to make you feel weightless. And so it launches up and then it goes around in this curve. And for that entire curve, they arc it to try to make you feel weightless. They try to get the normal force exactly equal to zero and it feels like you are in free fall the whole time, okay? And roller coasters like to do this because then all the riders vomit and it's good fun for everyone, right? I get, I'm getting old. I go on a roller coaster, I'm like nauseous for an hour afterwards now. So. Okay, questions about this idea. Weight versus gravity and including acceleration. Everybody okay with that? All right, if that's not clear, come see me in office hours. Cheers. You're going to ask me what? That's a workout for you. Oh, I mean, clearly, can't you tell? <laughs> Look at me. I don't want to brag, but I went to the gym the other day, and I actually put some weight on the bar, so <laughs> felt pretty good about that.